Uh, Dr. Leah Kroll joins me now for more just on this discussion and the operation. So Dr. Kroll, Musk says that the first human users will be people who've lost the use of their limbs. So let's get right to the science. I mean, how does and will this actually work? Great to see you, Kira. Um, this area of science is, is nothing short of very cool and very exciting. Um, so here's how it works. Neuralink designed a device that functions like an electrode or a specialized sensor. That device gets implanted into the brain and then it reads the electrical signals that our brain cells are constantly sending to each other. Those signals will ultimately get translated into actions outside of the body. In this case, we're specifically talking about controlling a computer or a smartphone app. Wow. So you mentioned that this could be a major game changer in the piece. You're reiterating it now, but it needs to be proven safe and effective as well, right? So how will the company go about making sure that it is? Such a good point. Safety is absolutely top of mind right now. Um, and in fact, you can tell in Elon Musk's statement that he was pointing out that the person who received the implant is recovering well. So, so he knows that. Um, the way that we ensure this is the way we ensure the safety and efficacy of any medical treatment. And that's by conducting rigorous clinical trials. So in the case of Neuralink, their trial lasts about six years. The first 18 months of it are kind of this short follow-up period where people are checking in with the investigators very frequently, making sure that things are functioning properly, that safety is intact, that nothing is going wrong. And then for the following five years, they continue, continue to see the investigators regularly, but there we're really looking for long-term effectiveness. So what other applications could a brain implant like this have for other patients? Let's sort of look into the future now, if indeed this is going to be successful and safe. Yeah. So the two major active areas of research in this space are movement and language. Movement entails, like Neuralink, controlling computers, phones, but it also means physically getting around, be that by controlling an artificial limb or a powerized um, motor chair, things like that. And then language literally means giving someone who's lost their ability to speak their voice back through a computer. Um, and I have to tell you, Kira, you know, the ability to give patients back neurologic function that they've lost would be nothing short of a medical miracle. So, you know, the idea that this is potentially in our grasp, even though we're years away, is, is beyond meaningful. Dr. Kroll, great to see you. Thanks so much just for diving in a little deeper with us. Thank you. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.